So the ICF Code of Ethics is broken into five parts. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the first three parts. And then we're going to be working later on the, the fourth part, which is going to be a whole series of videos from different coaches from around the world who worked on the ethics standards. But today, let's jump right in to the first three parts with coach Monique Betty. And she was on the ethics team that reviewed this and, and did the updates. So Monique, thank you so much for being here. Hey, my pleasure. So Monique, you're going to be talking about the introduction, the uh, the definitions, and kind of the, the principles. So let's start out with, I just want to start out with kind of throwing out this question of why do we have a code of ethics? Yeah, terrific question. You know, the code of ethics really does serve to uphold the International Coaching Federation and the global coaching, you know, the professional coaching community. And it allows us all to um, work in concert to really demonstrate the values that ICF has for its professional coaching community. Great. So in the introduction, we have, you know, a couple things about like who this is, who this is related to, um, and, you know, a little bit deeper on the why, but, um, yeah. So who does, who does need to be, um, abiding by these standards? Well, and that's a really good question, which takes us to how we've expanded on the definitions, which is the second part um, of our introduction with the code of ethics. And defining the coaching agreement is really where the coaching relationship takes part. But the ICF code of ethics really stretches beyond just having an agreement in place and recognizing that if you're an ICF professional and a part of the ICF staff, then you are taking a pledge to uphold the code of ethics as they're defined. Great. Yeah, I noticed in the definitions, uh, I don't know if this was there previously, but the, the word sponsor is there. Um, so, uh, and I think that's something key that shows up in ethics uh, when essentially the person you're coaching and the person who's paying you uh, might not be the same person. So there's definitely some ethical issues that could crop up there. Something that really stood out for me for a change that was made in this code of ethics is really the definition around um, equality and systemic equality. And it's ensuring that those of us who are credentialed coaches and the community that we serve feels that they are treated equitably, which was so very important. Um, you know, you think that sometimes uh, certain uh, aspects of life don't have to be spelled out in black and white, but I think it speaks to the integrity that ICF has for the global professional coaching community, because this code of ethics does in fact set us apart. And there are many individuals out here who do refer to themselves as a coach and they may or may not have a particular code of ethics that they adhere to, but if you are in fact an ICF credentialed professional, you have taken a pledge to uphold these code of ethics. So point number three talks about the ICF core values and the ethics principles. So how are the core values related to these uh, ethics standards? You know, the ICF core of values is really the starting point through which the code of ethics have been defined. And the core values of integrity, excellence, cooperation, and respect is really the starting point for us to then craft the code of ethics to define how we are to uh, be in this professional global coaching community. Well, thank you so much, Monique. Do you have any kind of closing statement or, or words for coaches out there? As an ICF professional, I take great pride in adhering to and abiding by the ICF code of ethics because it does provide um, assurance to those who we work with that not only are our qualifications as a credential coach being adhered to in the service that we provide, but we're also upholding a particular value system, which uh, we adhere to and subscribe to. And as an ICF professional, we pledge to uphold our standings to these values and code of ethics in all interactions, even beyond that with our coach-client relationship. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that uh, about going beyond the coach-client relationship, because this new code, it goes beyond the coach-client relationship to how you're acting in all instances as a coach and also to the staff of your coaching company, the staff of ICF. Um, so there's there's um, a broad range of who this applies to and when it applies to you too. Absolutely. 
thank you, Monique, and thank you to the Code Review team for doing all of this work. Uh, and if you are watching this, I think it's time to head up to the next video, which is here, uh, which is the first step, the ethics standards. That's point number four, and specifically the responsibility to clients. We'll see you in the next video.